Hi, my name is Mike Campanini, and today we will be doing a Blender to UDK episode, and we will construct a metal floor plate uh, to be used as a bridge in the Unreal Engine. We will go over uh, UV unwrapping and texturing, and then finally bring it into the, the engine itself. Uh, we're going to get started with Blender 2.65 and the SQC Export script, which is available for download in the video description. I'm going to go into my viewport and hit in and go down to the display panel, which is here. I want you to make sure that your scale is set to 1, your subdivisions are set to 12. If you need help understanding why, there's another video on my channel uh, which goes over understanding units and scale in, inside of UDK. With my units and scale set, let's get started. I'm going to go into my viewport and close my panel on the right. I'm going to hit Shift A and add a mesh. I'm going to see if I can get the general shape of this down in about 5 minutes or so. Uh, so right now, this is a uh, 2 feet tall uh, cube, which I don't want. It needs to be a little bit smaller than that. I'm going to hit my magnet and then snap to increments of the grid, which will snap to my uh, 12 subdivisions, which I set down here. So I'm going to scale it down a little bit more. And then from here, I'm going to put a subdivision line right down the center. Now, I'm going to go into wireframe so I can select the back vertices too. Hit X, delete the vertices. Uh, go into my modifier panel and hit mirror. I'm going to uh, do a mirror modifier across the x-axis and I'm going to hit this button right here as well. I will also be doing a Y, delete the vertices here, a Y mirror as well. That way all four sides of the uh, metal plate will be the same. Uh, so I want this to be about six feet wide, so I'm going to grab these left vertices, hit GX, and I'm going to move this out uh, so that I am using uh, three on each side, three grid, large grid lines on each side, so that would be six feet. And this is approximately eight inches uh, in height, and then I'm going to go into the side view, and I want it to be, uh, let's say, four feet uh, this way. So. Same thing I did last time, grab, cross the y-axis, and I'm just going to park it right here. So we have one, two, three, four grid lines, that's four feet right there. So now to add the detail, I'm going to go into the front ortho view. I'm going to hit and place down two subdivisions here. I'm going to hit uh, B and get my uh, box selection tool. Hit grab, cross the X, hold shift, and I'm going to bring this out some so I have a little bit of curve on the edge. Uh, I'm going to add another edge loop, bring this to the outside. If I hit scale X and zero, it's going to straighten that out for me, and I'm going to put another edge loop right next to it. If I hold shift, I'll be able to really get a precise movement there. So it's not uh, directly on the previous edge loop I did, but it's, it's parked right next to it. So from here, I'm going to hit Control tab and go into face selection. Uh, I'm going to get out of the wireframe mode, hit C, and I'll just be able to pick up these by uh, clicking my mouse and selecting them. Now from here, hitting E to extrude, and then I'm going to left click to drop it down in place, hit Alt S to scale, and I'm going to hold Shift so I can bring this out just a little bit. Uh, going back into my front ortho, uh, you can see what we just did right there. So we brought those side side panelings out just a little bit. Adding a couple more edge loops, I'm going to bring this off to the side. Holding shift, I'm going to get rid of my magnet tool now, I don't need that anymore. Uh, grab across the x-axis axis, and just move it right close. And one more. A couple in this direction, not that way. A couple in this direction here, move it pretty close. Okay, now what I'm going to do is go into face selection mode, control tab, and then face. I'm going to select this face, and from the front, I'm going to bring it up across the Z axis. Now, if I go into wireframe, I have to make sure that I don't have an extra face uh, in between these two here. So I'm going to hit Z, and I'm going to delete that face because of the mirroring. It's adding uh, an extra extra geometry that I do not want. And you can see it's here as well, which we'll go in and get rid of that too. So hitting Z, going out of wireframe mode. I'm going to go to the side view and zoom out just a little bit. I'm going to add a 
an edge loop right in the center here and going into vertex mode, select this guy, select this guy, grab across the Y axis, hold shift and bring it back just a little bit, control tab, face selection, and I'm going to delete this side right here, just delete the faces. And if I zoom this way, you'll see this is what I was talking about earlier where it was adding the faces uh, because of the mirror modifier. So what I'm going to do is just delete them all. X, delete faces, and out of wireframe frame mode, we're set. Control tab, let's do edge selection, hold down alt and right click. That grabs the whole edge right there. And I'm gonna go into the front ortho and into wireframe mode. I'm gonna hit E to extrude it, and then I'm gonna just bring it right in across the x-axis. So what I did right there is I adjusted my merge limit and bumped it up, and then they were able to uh, get into each other pretty quickly. If it gets within one unit, you'll see it snaps right there. Now one's a little bit high, and I should probably adjust that a little bit lower. Let's say, let's do 0.25, and that should be just, just good enough. Uh, so from here, I'm going to get out of my wireframe mode by hitting Z, and then turning off my magnet down here that I just turned on. Uh, I'm going to put in a new edge loop right on the edge, this section here, and then move it real close, go into this right here, hit from the front, G, Z, and just a little bit, I'm going to bring that down, and that's creating a little bevel in the floor. So. Next, next what I want to do is kind of create something how these uh, how these sections will be able to connect with each other, so how these floor sections will be able to connect. So I'm going to grab the side and just bring this straight out. I'm going to hit one of these faces, shift S, cursor to selected. When I hit shift A and then add my cylinder, it's going to bring it right to where I put that cursor. I'm going to rotate across the x-axis 90 degrees by hitting R, X, and then 90. Uh, left click to drop it, and I'm going to scale that way down. Going across the side view. I'm going to move that front some. Turn off my magnet. And what I'm going to do here, since uh, this may not be uh, perfectly lined up, I'm going to hit both faces, scale, Y, zero, and then just put them right on top of each other. I'm going to undo that real quick because I'm going to select this one too. Scale, Y, zero, do the same thing. I'm going to select one face of this floating geometry right here, hit L, shift D, grab Z, move it straight down. And there we go. Now you'll see how from the side these are sticking out way too far. I can't have that, so what I'm going to do is go into um, edge selection mode and pretty much the same thing that I just did. I'm going to move these way back and line them up with the rest of the uh, floor plating. So if I go back to the front view, get out of wireframe mode, go into face selection, hit my C tool, I'm going to mouse down so I get a big selection. Just going to select all of these guys here, scale Y and zero, make sure everything's on the same plane, and there we go. Uh, the next step, what I'm going to do is, since we, for the most part, finished our design, I'm going to add another mirror modifier, not a mirror modifier, but an array modifier. And you'll see how it places it right to the side. We don't want that. So we're going to have to change which angle it goes off of. So I'm going to hit uh, 1 for Y and then 0 for uh, X. So I changed which, uh, which direction it's going to create the array in. And then I'm going to bump my count up a whole bunch. I'm going to press 0 to go into my camera view. And if I hit Shift F, I'll be able to control uh, where my camera is pointing to. Now, on my render or world settings, I have paper sky and blend sky, which isn't really important to do. But I also have the ambient inclusion set to multiply, multiply and the environment lighting set to uh, 1. Uh, I'm going to turn up my samples here to 10. Anything above 8 will do fine, just so we get a better, better render out. I'm going to hit F12 to render. And you'll see our uh, 
never-ending bridge here, uh, which is what we're going to texture and bring into the Unreal Engine. Before we wrap up, there's a couple more things that I want to uh, fix in this. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into edge selection, I'm going to zoom in right here, and I really want to see these bevels a little bit more in our floor model. So I'm going to grab this outside edge right here, hit G, Z, and then just bring it down a little bit more. And I also want to see uh, these pieces here a little bit thicker than, the, than they are right now. So I'm going to hit uh, face mode and then just select inside G, X, and then just bring it in a little bit more. And that should do it for us here. Uh, this was part one of building the uh, bridge from the Blender to UDK, and the next step we will be uh, UV unwrapping and texturing it, and then bringing it into the game engine. So my name is Mark Campanini, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you. Bye.